Uh, I have been long considering whether I should show you or talk about what's going on outside. I'm still unsure about whether I should say anything or not or show you. I believe I got hit by possibly something like a mini torment tornado. Uh, the winds were powerful here the other day and it wiped out the entire meadow. Um, literally it broke poles on the chicken coop. It broke wooden stakes on the chicken coop fence. The wind was so intense blowing on the the chicken netting it broke it. It lifted up the oak heavy duty heavy oak A-frame that I can barely move that held only my weather station and threw it through the yard into the garden demolishing a metal stake and flattening it. It laid flat all of my solar panels which are fortunately undamaged and it laid flat my wind turbine tower which I was jumping up and down on like King Kong. Uh, fortunately the wind turbine and the tower neither are damaged. It basically lifted and threw everything. Um, the, the wind turbine is laying on the chicken coop unharmed. I got very fortunate. It's like something swept through here in this way with extreme high power wiping out the entire middle of the meadow. Um, I'm not going to go out because it's still windy today. I haven't been out in uh, two days. Yesterday I did the shooting video but that was really windy and dangerous and I was running around just tying things down and cleaning things up but other than that I've spent most of my time indoors there was flying debris and things flying literally sideways through here um, yesterday afternoon after I did that shooting video there was literally flying debris, debris going sideways through the meadow and uh, was really devastating it wiped out the entire middle of the meadow uh, no chickens got hurt. Oh, it ripped off the door from the chicken coop. Ripped off the lid of the chicken... Uh, ripped off the lid of one chicken coop. Ripped off the door of the chicken tractor. Uh, no chickens were harmed, fortunately, that I can tell. Um, they were all hiding and huddled up inside. But um, I think it was a, a... I don't know. I, I think a small... Maybe a whirlwind or something touched down but because it laid everything flat out here. I mean, this was more than extreme. Uh, fortunately, it didn't hurt the RV or the tiny house on wheels and didn't even hurt my RV porch. Funny enough, huh? Even the roof of the porch is un undamaged. Solar panels over there are untouched. So it literally came down through the middle of the meadow, right dead center in the meadow, and didn't hurt anything else. Even my tents are okay. Um, over here. I was worried they were fluffing up and trying to parachute, but they, they held their held their ground. So anyway, I um, have just been running around, battening things down, chasing things around, retarping things, tying down tarps with more weights uh, the last two days. So my um, weather station is broke. I haven't figured out why it's not working except that it's laying on the ground and I'm not going to pick it up again until after these winds are done. So you'll see I have 80 degrees indoors because it's sunny. Well, it's sometimes sunny. It is freezing cold out. We had snow on the ground this morning, um, but the the sun has burnt it off. It's not above 30 though. I can tell you it's below 30. Uh, oh yeah, the paper on the roof was shredded. It ripped the paper up to shreds that was on the roof. That's hanging down from up above on the roof. And But the, the roof is fine. The house held up with no damage. The roof is fine. Just the the paper, the rosin paper that, that lasted the entire winter 
got shredded. Uh, seriously, there were debris. There was debris flying sideways across. It was it was terrible yesterday. If you go out on the roads, or I don't know now. I haven't been out today, but I had to help a friend out yesterday. And if you go out on the roads, there were trees down, branches down. It was a mess out there. So. Anyway, I will have to go and figure out why my weather station isn't working. I don't see anything physically wrong. There's nothing physically broke. Maybe the battery's just decided to quit after it fell over. Maybe it just doesn't like working laying down. So I'll go and take care of that tomorrow when the winds are died down better. And we'll get back to work here at the off-grid homestead. Um, let's see how the batteries are looking. We have 13.13 volts and dropping. 26 whopping watts coming out of these solar panels that are standing up. Sorry, baby was scratching on the door. She has spring fever and she wants to uh, go outside. All he did is tap on the table and she runs away. Um, let me see, what have we had today? Oh, the voltage of the panels is only 77 volts right now. Ah, yuck. All right, last two days was pretty bad. We've had here uh, 1,800 watts today, so it was partly cloudy. It wasn't very pretty. Yesterday we only had 2,000 watts. Uh, but again, one whole entire set of solar panels is down on its face. So that might be making a difference. I think some of the wires were ripped as well. So I'm going to have to go out and do some repairs. It literally was, I mean, it was terrifying. It was devastating. And honestly, I was worried for the tiny house because it was uh, it was powerful wind came through here. I mean, you can see the damage. It it broke the chicken fence. It broke the trees that I had staked into the ground out there. It broke them. So uh, here's a very good day. This was um, two days ago, and we had an almost 3,000 watts so that was my highest day yet almost 3,000 watts of power now I didn't need a generator that day at all uh, but yesterday I ran the generator for one gas um, uh, one gas tank full which is about three hours on the DC generator it only gets three hours on a gas tank on when charging the forklift batteries because it is running harder than it did over on the RV golf cart batteries and today I'm gonna go out pretty soon here now in a few minutes and fire that thing up because the I got a lot of computer work yet to do and the um, battery voltage is starting to drop we don't want to get that too low and then by morning after sitting at rest the Batteries are usually coming up to about 12.3, 12.4 volts. So I'm out of the 12.2 range, and that's with with actually using the computer and the lights and the modem and the inverter and accessories for a couple hours each evening without generator power. So they're getting better, but they're not exactly the best yet. Hopefully as the warmer weather comes, they'll start getting better. Uh, speaking of which, let's go over and look at the actual battery temperature in Fahrenheit. Because I know everybody tells me to convert to Celsius, but I just don't feel like it when I can just look. We have 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Oops, it's down to 4 watts. 4 watts of power coming in. 58 degrees. Not too bad, but uh, especially with the powerful wind we've had blasting through here. But as the weather warms up, I think I'm going to see improved battery performance. So we'll keep an eye on that and see if the forklift batteries just don't like cold. It might be. But uh, a couple weeks and we'll know for sure. I do have a guarantee, so if it is defective, I will get it replaced. But I hate to... Uh, to call them and have them come all the way out here if it's just the cold. So we'll see. We'll see you soon. Wild animal running through the forest. Huh? There's a baby cat. Huh? How you doing out here, huh? Fuzzy bear. They call her fuzzy bear because she stands up on her back legs like a bear. 
You looking for mice and birds? Huh? You're not ready to go in already, are you? Huh? How you doing? You're all fluffed up and excited, huh? Inside? Huh? No? Okay. I've been uh, working on firewood. Here I've got my drying station. Actually, I'll take you over. I don't know if you saw the bed laying on it uh, upside down. The wind actually picked it up and flipped it over the other day. I had it sitting down, I was cleaning it. Now I gotta clean it again. Out here, my wood is starting to come out of the snow. I'm starting to see wood here and there showing itself out of the snow. And uh, I'm grabbing logs and laying them out to dry, splitting them burning them so I have enough wood I'll get through the rest of the cold spell knocked over the wind knocked over all my tanks back here I'm surprised the tents are okay um, here's a little pile of of wood I'm slowly taking it out I'm setting it over here on pallets Over here I'm setting it up to dry it's not much but I am drying it and burning it as I go so here's my drying station and uh, yeah I think I've got enough I think I will make it through the rest of the season with what I had cut already it's gonna be all right well, there's a mess out here now yeah I spent the other day cleaning what was that two days ago I cleaned up this entire <laughs> area and now uh, the wind has done a job so tomorrow when the wind is gone I'll be cleaning again and repairing rebuilding actually I'll show you the the chicken fence is actually broken places I don't know how well this camera shows that board broke broke right over the weather station stand, that thing was thrown over into the back corner of the chicken coop. Now that weather station was over here and it ended up halfway inside the, well it was laying, that stake stopped it from laying flat out in the garden. It was laying on top of that stake which was bent over in half inside the garden area. That was pretty brutal yesterday, and last night still. Now I want to show you something really cool. I've got... Uh, let me see, I have to be careful I don't grab... Yeah, that's parsley. Yeah. Okay, some plants are quite amazing. I have parsley that survived the winter. I do believe this is going to regrow. I think it might pull out of it. Because there's some greens here yet. Um, my salad shade didn't make it through the winter, but the uh, material was bio biodegradable anyway. So I'll have to rebuild no matter what. Now I've got some uh, pretty amazing stuff here. Now you'll notice, look frozen that's that's froze it's not melted okay it's cold out and quite amazing is my plants like hot and spicy oregano I love this stuff I am going to harvest this stuff this year and I am going to make a breast freshener out of it by just if you eat a couple of these dried leaves Oh, the smell, the smell of my fingers, the smell of the leaf, mmm, really, really nice, hot and spicy oregano, 
It is like the ultimate breath freshener. One leaf chewed slowly will freshen your entire mouth for hours. It's quite amazing. I'll chew it real slow. I'm working around your mouth. I really love it. Really love this stuff. So, some plants are pretty hardy. Catnip, brought over from Michigan. Deep down in there, green and alive. Smells good. So I'm still, still chewing the hot and spicy oregano. That's edible. Frisk is anything. Middle of winter. Well, frozen out. Snowy out. Ooh, that's got a strong bite. Wow. That's got a strong bite. Oh, wow. Look at You can hear the snow crunching on their foot. And here we've got another of <laughs> my oranges I threw out into the garden. I thought they'd rot, but I was wrong. Um, Hannaford's grocery store. You often buy oranges and uh, you get them home and find out they're rotten. And uh, since I don't go to town very often, sometimes I threw them outside before they really rotted on me. So here is a really nice cold weather snack. This is wild garlic. And it's uh, poking its head up out of the snow out of the cold harsh earth I just can't believe this stuff can grow like this I, I, I can't believe it but it's not the nicest tasting when it's this this cold out it's almost got a it's got an odd sweet taste to it rather than the normal bite that it normally has but um, it's food I mean there are nutrients to be found here in the winter snow, when the snow starts to recede, there are nutrients to be found. Look at the greens right there. Not even sure what that is, to be honest. Yeah, that wild garlic does, doesn't taste very nice. It's a, a weird sweet taste. But it's alive. Looks like I could still eat some Brussels sprouts that grew up through the winter after I abandoned my garden. Brussels sprouts. And here, unbelievable, as cold as it is, there's some growth coming up. It survives through the winter. There's sorrel. Sorrel is a nice, tangy tasting leaf. And this is what the animals, how they live. They dig through, they dig through the snow in winter and they find this stuff. A lot of these things survive the winter under the snow. And the deer will paw it up and dig down to find these fresh vitamins and nutrients. The sorrel is very nice and tangy. So, my garden is yielding up nutrients. It's not the tastiest because they're, they're old, but it's there. There are vitamins and nutrients to be had even in the uh, in the snow. Oh, there's another broken uh, broken part of my fence. It literally did some damage yesterday. I got some repairs to do. Oh, baby cat, how you doing? Huh? Come here. Right here. Psst, come here. Under the fence. There you go. Hi, how you doing, huh? You're a big, tough outdoor cat, aren't you now? Huh? You want to go inside, don't you? She's cold. All right, we'll go inside. Well, I just wanted to show you some of the some of the food you can get scrounging around out here in the cold winter months. Once it starts to melt and clear off, I got a bunch of herbs down here. So we'll see as the snow recedes more and more how much I can munch out here. All right, catch you all later. Come on, baby cat. Come on.